Good day, I'm Lisa Rowe and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, July 17, 2024. $500 million has been allocated to undertake a national cleanup program following the passage of Hurricane Beryl earlier this month. This will be carried out by the National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, over a one-month period. The NSWMA will also work alongside the National Works Agency, NWA, which has been allocated $800 million for the same project. In a statement to Parliament on Tuesday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness said an extensive removal of bulky and residential waste would be done by both entities. They will also focus on the cleanup of thoroughfares and urban centres and the removal of overgrown vegetation and fallen trees. With the Emancipation and Independence holidays approaching, it is also a perfect opportunity for Jamaicans to become involved in this initiative by participating in the cleanup and beautification efforts. It is our intention to utilize the labor of community personnel aided by the use of small tools and heavy equipment where necessary. Mr. Holness says while there is no allocation in this program for constituencies specifically, members of parliament and councillors can make recommendations for consideration. He says the NWA and the NSWMA will have the latitude to fast-track recovery efforts in areas that have been most affected. Many communities have taken it onto themselves to debush, to cut trees, but they're not carting away the debris and it is piling up in the community. So the NSWMA and the NWA will have that latitude. They will have to work together because the NWA will generate debris and the NSWMA must move it. Continuing the update on the recovery process, the Prime Minister has also announced that the Jamaica Public Service Company, JPS, has sought help within the Caribbean to fast-track restoration efforts. This is from the Caribbean Electrical Utility Services Corporation, Carilec. We should be getting line workers from countries such as Belize and Cayman who will help JPS to address the outage pockets that exist within the island. And earlier today, Minister with Responsibility for Energy, Daryl Vaz, disclosed that the number of countries had increased. I can confirm that Belize and Suriname have agreed to send persons and also Trinidad and Guyana. I had a conversation this morning with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, for which I asked her, to please reach out to all of our brother and sister countries to see what assistance can be given in the shortest possible time. In addition, the JPS has supplemented its resource pool with former employees as well as engaging local contractors from the bauxite industry who are assigned to Hanover and St. Elizabeth. In the meantime, the Prime Minister reports that power has been restored to approximately 655,000 customers, which represents 94.6% of JPS's customer base island-wide. Electricity has also been restored to all major hospitals and to approximately 81% of critical NWC sites. For areas of St. Elizabeth that were affected, restoration is now at approximately 49%. Full restoration for Manchester is projected by the end of this week and by the end of July for Clarendon. The JPS has indicated that they are targeting the week ending August 10th for full restoration island-wide. On to agriculture and fisheries, $700 million has been allocated to provide various short-term assistance to purchase critical items that are needed by farmers. Portfolio Minister Floyd Green gave an outline of the distribution in Parliament. The allocation includes $210 million, which will focus on crop recovery. We will allocate $90 million to our vegetable lines, $40 million towards our banana and planted farmers, and $80 million towards other crops, especially yam and our coffee farmers. A further breakdown sees $60 million assisting livestock producers and $26 million to rebuild livestock infrastructure. Funds will also be distributed to the fisheries sectors for the purchase of fertilizers, repairs to greenhouse infrastructure, irrigation equipment, land preparation and farm roads. $150 million will be divided among members of parliament based on the extent of damage in their constituencies. The allocations will have to be utilized over the next four weeks and will go through a verification process 
to ensure that they that the persons have in fact suffered damage through hurricane burial. The distribution of the funds will be managed through the Rural Agricultural Development Agency, the National Irrigation Commission, Agro Investment Corporation, and the Jamaica Agricultural Society. Persons can report damage or seek assistance through the Ministry's Customer Service Hotline at 888-ASK-RADA. That's 888-275-7232. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett has announced that a new team dubbed the Jamaica Tourism Supplies Logistics Hub has been created to help build unprecedented opportunities for local businesses. Closing the sectoral debate in Parliament yesterday, Minister Bartlett said the move represented a strategic recognition of Jamaica's potential to serve as a key supply logistics hub for the Caribbean cruise industry. The logistics hub is not just about procuring goods. It's not out about bringing in goods from elsewhere that we may not have to package them here, to label them here, and then to transfer them to other destinations. But it's also about building human capital. It's about training a new cater of skilled Jamaicans to participate in various areas, not just of tourism management and organization, but of course industrial management and organization. The tourism minister adds that several major cruise lines, including Carnival, Royal Caribbean, MSC, and Norwegian, have expressed keen interest in sourcing more of their global product needs from Jamaica. This is excellent news for our farmers, our manufacturers, our artisans, and other small and medium-sized enterprises. It opens up a vast new market for local products, potentially transforming our economic landscape. The Jamaica Tourism Supplies Logistics Hub will be chaired by Dr. Kerry Wallace, Executive Director of the Tourism Enhancement Fund. He will be guided by Wilfred Bagaloo of the Price Waterhouse Coopers. And finally, more Jamaicans are set to benefit from free healthcare services, including consultations, testing, and screening within their communities. This will be done through a partnership with the Jamaica Aid Support for Life under the One Life, One Health project that was launched recently in St. Anne. The free health services will be delivered via two mobile units staffed with healthcare specialists, including a doctor, nurse and phlebotomist who will visit communities across the island. The initiative is supported by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID's Meeting Targets and Maintaining Epidemic Control Project. Both stakeholders have agreed that the project is a comprehensive and inclusive approach to health care that will enhance public health resilience and the ability to respond to emerging health threats. Our mobile clinics will bring much needed health services directly to these communities. We will train NGO workers who are crucial in bridging the gap between the healthcare system and the people that we wanted to serve. This initiative will help to build strong and resilient health systems that are prepared to respond to current and emerging health threats faced by Jamaicans. Persons are being encouraged to take advantage of health information, wellness workshops, and free screenings that will be provided. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching.